الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد Since the holy month of Ramadan is steadily approaching probably in the next couple of days bi'idhnillah ta'ala again preparing ourselves making a plan being observant of those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward us for like the Quran reading the Quran uh, reading a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam studying use, use, take some time out in your busy days and your busy lives to study something from a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or, or books of knowledge books on aqidah books on fiqh books on manners, books on whatever is going to help you draw nearer to Allah and be beneficial with your time. Use your time wisely. And Ramadan is going to be an exercise for us to practice what we should be doing year-round. Of course, fasting and trying to attain taqwa. Doing righteous deeds like giving sadaqah to remove some of those sins. and. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all to have all of our sins expiated. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And generally using our time in a wise fashion, taking care of ourselves physically, mentally, and of course, spiritually. And this leads us, or reminds us, uh, uh, reminds us, of a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about two blessings that the people take for granted that most people are not mindful of that most people even seem to be unaware of the blessing of your time and the blessing of your health subhanallah and recently I've come across many situations which were reminders even coming out here in the in the forest it takes health so take care of your health eat the good things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed for us stay away from the doubtful foods those chemically processed poisonous foods I'm not saying that they're haram but we know they have so much harm in them so try your best to eat good take care of your health and to live a healthy lifestyle exercise do some things for yourself physically mentally by reading ilm, ilm seeking knowledge and physically of course exercise hiking biking whatever you like to do swimming but do some things for yourself and in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an Ibn Abbas radi Allahu ta'ala anhuma qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ni'matani maghboonun fihima kathirun min al-nas as-sihatu wal-faraag ruahu Bukhari in this hadith collected in Bukhari, the hadith of Ibn Abbas, Ibn, Ibn, uh, <coughs> Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, huma, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them both. Abbas and Ibn Abbas. He said, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Two blessings that many of the people take for granted or the two there are two blessings that many people take for granted they're careless of or almost as if they're unaware of asiha health wal farag and their time because our time is invaluable 
the way we spend our days and our nights is invaluable. You're only good. This is the last time that you will live this day in your life. This is the last time you will be the age that you are in your life. If you're 20 years old, if you're 21, if you're 30, if you're 40, if you're 50, 60, what have you. This is the final day or you're only going to experience this day one time. And it's steadily ticking away. So how you spend it, do you spend it on righteousness and the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those things which will help you in that? As the scholars say, al wasila laha ahkam al maqasid that the means to something takes the same hukum as that thing, the same ruling. So for example, if we spend our time in the remembrance of Allah, or as we're sitting here reading this one hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we came, I came out here to hike and enjoy and reflect on the creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and be in an environment where I could remember him and read a hadith so I could share it with my, remind myself and share it with others. So by the grace and mercy of Allah, we hope that just by me driving out to these woods and hiking in these woods, that that is a means for the remembrance of Allah, that someone will remember Allah and then I will remember Allah. Meaning that for all of those things, they are a means to that righteous end, so you're rewarded for every step of the way. So that's why it's imperative to use your time wisely. And the other thing that the Prophet Sallallahu made ishara to or said in here, which is another ni'mah that the people take for granted, is their health. And we already mentioned, and the benefits, the benefits of being a strong believer in Iman, but also physically, to be able to, to uh, with your strength to be able to help others if they're in need physically. Perhaps by carrying things, perhaps by helping to defend someone, or defending yourself and your family and your property. All of these things are Islamic concepts. So by physically taking care of yourself and striving to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, using your time wisely, all of these things will help you. And they all can be acts of ibadah if your intention is pure. As the Prophet ﷺ said, Verily actions are tied to the intentions. So if you intend something good and, and, and righteous, and you've done an action that's in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, you'll be rewarded by that. Meaning it's, a, it, it's an accordance and it's an act of ibadah, that your intention is to fulfill an act of ibadah. This is a type of worship. Then you'll be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you strive with your body and you strive with your time, then this you'll be rewarded for. And especially so during the holy month of Ramadan. So do those things which will help you gain taqwa, help you attain taqwa. And this is a reminder, first and foremost to myself, because sometimes I feel as if I'm speaking and the, the, the breath is leaving me and it's going out, hopefully for someone else to benefit. But it seems that this, the brain and my own heart doesn't receive that. So we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives us, guides us, helps us to strengthen our heart and our bodies physically, mentally, and spiritually so that we come closer to Him and we do those things that He does and we avoid those things that He hates.